Good afternoon. If you have watched my other videos, you know that this is a drastic change in background. And that is because I am starting my new job tomorrow and my boyfriend lives closer to my job than I do. So I am staying here for a few weeks until I move into my new apartment in a few weeks, which actually works out really well. So I just wanted to throw that out there that this video is mostly going to be a voiceover and it was filmed in my last apartment but that is why it is a change in background and then there's going to be another change in background when I actually do move into my new apartment and I'm so excited about that because I get to redo my art room and everything. My art room is essentially going to be my living room. I should say my living room is going to essentially be my art room but I feel like I'm holding this in a really awkward way but I kind of just I just wanted anyway let me set that down real quick but this is a painting that I did a few months ago weeks ago in February I'll link the video for this one at the end of this one <laughs> and, um, and yeah 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 starting off strong featuring the edge canvas from Jerry Aramas because I was worried these wouldn't be delivered as advertised I don't know why, but when you buy things online, it's always a toss-up. Nonetheless, it was great. I used a pasta bowl to trace a circle in what I can only describe as as close to the middle of the canvas as possible. It didn't need to be exact, but I also didn't want it to be noticeably off-center. This is the best way I can think to explain the process that you're witnessing. Step one, to procure a tiny string. Step two, thread the string through the needle. Step three, thread a bead through the string then tie it to the end. Step four, poke a hole in the canvas, turn the canvas around then string the thread through the back. Step five, Pull the string all the way up. Step six, string the tiny bead through to meet the canvas and repeat until complete to heart's content. I stopped around the 10th or 12th string because I realized the pattern I was going for wouldn't be accomplished with the way I started so I needed to stop and reassess what I was doing with this piece of art. To tighten these strings to the canvas, I used my trusty Gorilla Glue and tape. First, I secured all the strings in place with tape, then I painted over them with Gorilla Glue so that when I remove the tape, they'll still be in place. This video features my outfit because it was my interview outfit, so you know it's possible to pursue being an artist and working full time. Anyway. I took a moment before I left for my interview to do some sketching. Planning out my pieces before execution is so important for me because by doing so, I avoid wasting time and resources. By sketching out my ideas, I'm able to avoid ending up with drastically unbalanced lines, for instance, as you see here, and problem solve much earlier in my creative process. 
Sketching out designs takes a good while sometimes. It's something I concentrate on quite a bit. I complete a lot of drafts that I actually don't like at all, but trial and error is part of the process. Success comes from doing, and you might have to learn new skills outside of what you're used to, but going about the process with a plan could definitely help with any reservations you might be having. That afternoon, after killing my interview, <laughs> I added more lines based on the draft that I had sketched out earlier. The strings on the sides of the canvas are a sixth of the size as the strings on the top of the canvas. I did this to add some variation within the piece. I then started to outline the inner border of the canvas to create a guide for my beading. But I had a change in heart. Instead, I thought it would look better to create shapes inside of the lines, so I did just that. I followed a similar style for the bottom half of the canvas as well. I was really into the geometric style without it looking like shattered glass. I filled in the shapes with Posca markers, then painted over them with black paint. This way, I only needed to do one layer of paint over the first medium, the Posca markers, and I knew my glue would stick to the paint, but I wasn't sure how it would work applied over the Posca marker ink. Once I had designed more of the top of the canvas, I had other ideas for the bottom of the canvas, and it was coming out so well. Fast forward to the next afternoon, I threw my hair up into a bun and then got to work. I added a few more lines where I thought they were necessary, and I wanted to follow the pattern of the top of the canvas, but with beading. The beading needle is so tiny that I have trouble getting it through the canvas, so I poked the holes with a large needle first, separated more strings, and then got to beading. Similarly to the last process, this is the best way I can think to explain this. Step one, poke the holes in the canvas. Step two, procure tiny string. Step three, thread the string through the needle and tie a bead on the end to anchor it. 
Step 4. Turn canvas around. String thread through the back. Step 5. String tiny beetle in a row on the piece of thread. Step 6. Make sure the beads line up with the following hole. Step 7. String the needle through the following hole and pull it all the way through. Step 8. Flip the canvas over and thread one bead through the string as the second anchor. Step 9. Poke the needle through the same hole it just came out of on the opposite side of the bead so that it's not going back through the center of the bead. It's wrapping around the outside of it, therefore forming a knot. And step 10. Flip the canvas around and repeat. <laughs> this process is quite tedious and takes much longer than you might expect, so I picked up where I left off the next day. To make sure the beads are secured as best as possible, when a row is complete, I wrap the string around each bead in little figure eights and tie it off at the end. The other way I secure the beads is with glue. I typically only do this if the placement is situated above the wood where I wouldn't be able to thread it through anyway or if it would save more time and still be just as secure. I feel like with using glue, there's a much higher risk of, well, things like this can happen. When this happened, I just about lost my mind, but I got straight to fixing it. And I think to fix the whole line, it took me like 12 minutes, between nine to 12 minutes. And this was the only accident that happened it's because I straightened up very quickly after that and I rolled my sleeves up and continued to work. <laughs> Here I'm deciding if I should paint the canvas a different white or if it's okay as it is. It's okay as it is. I had already packed my plates at this point in my moving process, so I needed to make a quick clean palette, which is why I'm putting this plastic baggie over my plate. <laughs> Thank you. 
I thought about only varnishing specific areas of the piece, but then it started to drip and it just made sense for everything to be covered at that point. I noticed that the sponge had left a lot of lint behind, so I went in with a brush to clean that up, especially since it was noticeable on the white canvas. After one additional gloss coat and cleanup, it was good to go. So yeah, this is the first of three pieces that I'm going to have on display for sale at a gallery show. This is so exciting because getting myself in a gallery makes me feel like a real artist. Yay! <laughs> And I'm so excited about it. It's been very mentally exhausting just doing everything, but my life coach has literally helped me so much just when it comes to prioritizing things and um, just, just getting it done. But yeah, I'm so thankful to have as much support as I do with my entrepreneurial ideas and I'm very thankful that I've gone through a lot of trial and error already so I'm to the point where I kind of know what I'm doing but nobody ever really knows what they're doing it's just about doing and seeing what works and then if it works then great <laughs> but yeah I will see you in about another two weeks with part two <laughs>